is the city, Los Angeles, California. It's a nice place to live, even when it rains. Over three million people live here. Most of them are honest and work hard to earn a living. Some of them get lucky and hit it big. When someone starts earning big money, he very often becomes a target for those who try to help themselves to his profits by means of extortion. When that happens, we talk it over down here. The police administration building, Parker Center. I work here, I carry a badge. It was Monday, November 28th. It was raining in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of intelligence division. The boss is Captain Colwell. My partner's Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. An electronics engineer had complained to the police. He claimed a known hoodlum was trying to move in on his business. We had dealt with the hoodlum before. For the previous week, we had checked the places he was known to frequent with no luck. We couldn't locate him. We were preparing to swear out a warrant for his arrest when he informed us he would come in voluntarily. He was a half hour late when the phone rang. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. This time, down the lobby? Yeah, they're sending him up. He won't have any trouble finding his way. This is one I'd really like to see us close the books on. If we can get him to spit out those two pieces. Where's the missing witness and who's number three? Without that, Joe, it'll just be another vocal exercise, only we can hang on to him for a while this time. And that's not even half a loaf, is it? No. Nope. I hope we can pin him. Let's play the string out slow and careful. Gentlemen. Come on over and sit down, Fox. Left my raincoat at home today. Got lucky, found a parking spot right in front. Sit down. Mr. the hot seat? It'll do. You still driving that custom-built car? Not the green one, sold it. Got a new one built. Real beauty. That right. Hey, I'm sorry I'm late. No, you're not. No, now Friday, don't start leaning on me. Nobody's leaning on you, Fox. I just get a little weary of the same old routine. You heard we were looking for you all last week, but like always, you took your sweet time about coming in. You pulled this stunt for over five years that we've been dealing with you. You wait till just before they shove that warrant down your throat, and then you show, and when you do, you're always late. I'm a busy man, Friday, and I hope you and Gannon here remember that I always cooperate. I come in on my own. I save the taxpayers' money. You don't have to serve the warrant. Now, I'd like to catch the last part of the fights tonight, so let's get on to it, all right? Before we start, we want you to know your rights. Any statements you make can and will be used against you in a court of law. I know. I got nothing to hide. You also have the right to the presence of an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed without any charge. You know you're beautiful? I mean it. If I can't afford one. You understand your rights? Sure, I understand them. But I don't make a big thing of them. Only guilty people are worried about their rights. My lawyer's out of town till tomorrow, but I don't need him because I'm clean. Go ahead, take your best shots. Your name? Come on, you know my name, address, phone number, and the pressure in the tires on my car. And you know this routine almost as well as we do. If I ran my business this way, I'd go broke. Your name? George Fox. I live at 1620 Marinette Road, Pacific Palisades. Phone number 4637399. You don't have to give us your whole record, Fox. That'd take too long. Now, hold it. You're talking about the old George Fox. I cleaned up my act. If you guys looked at my record, you know I ain't been busted in over four years. No arrests, but you've been questioned 11 times during those four years. That proves what I'm saying. I'm being rousted by you guys. You know better than that. Don't blow your cool. I ain't so. I came in under my own steam, didn't I? With a little shove from that warrant. Don't be silly. It's great for my business. I'm a celebrity. So the papers put it on the front page. George Fox questioned by cops. You can't buy an ad like that. You see, Gannon, I'm a legitimate businessman. One of the companies I own that puts vending machines in big factories. Hot and cold food, cigarettes, coffee, fruit, all kinds of machines. Okay, so I'm trying to sell a guy at a factory on putting in my machines. He sees that stuff in the papers. He figures I'm still a muscle guy. So he gets scared and he signs up. You don't use muscle anymore, though. Oh, I don't have to. 
Look, it ain't how tough you are that counts. It's how tough people think you are. They think I'm still a muscle bum like in the old days. I don't tell them no, so they're glad to do business with me. That vending machine business, they tell us that's one the organization is in all over the country. Is that a fact? You wouldn't know about that. Just what I see in the papers and on TV, that's all I ever knew. You got friends in the organization, haven't you? I've got all kinds of friends. But before you get any ideas, they ain't in my company. I'm a legitimate businessman, and I got no partners. Must be nice not taking orders from anybody. Oh, I take orders. You do? Sure, from my customers. They push me around, but that's part of the business. Like I said before, I cleaned up my act. You guys are talking to the new George Fox. Why don't you knock it off, George? Knock what off? Don't you ever sing a new song? Is that the only one you know? Every time you're brought in, you go into that same tired routine, the new George Fox. Well, in our book, you're still the same guy. The same George Fox who did three long terms in the joint, and you didn't do them for jaywalking. You went to queue for armed robbery and twice for assault with a deadly weapon. So you haven't been arrested in over four years. Nobody down here brought you in 11 times to question you just because they like to see you. They brought you in to ask you about murders, shakedowns, and strong arm rackets. They didn't arrest you because they couldn't, and you know why they couldn't. Because in two cases, the only witness against you suddenly wound up dead, and in the others, witnesses were afraid to testify. So don't start telling us about the new George Fox. If you're so clean, where you been since we started looking for you a week ago? On a Boy Scout camping trip? Nice try. You're pretty good. You can see why he made sergeant. Meaning? Well, we all know why he made that speech. He was trying to get me sore. If you guys can get me to blow my top, maybe I'll spill things you don't know. Won't work. I've been this route before. You want information for me? Come and get it. Ask me questions. I just did, Fox, and I want an answer. Where you been this last week? On my boat, fishing. Any law against that? Where'd you go? Off Catalina. You guys ought to do that every couple of months. Great for your nerves. Who was on the boat with you? Nobody. I carry enough food and I got an extra tank of gas, so I never put into shore from the time I left till I got back to the marina. Go prove I'm lying. The last four years, nobody seems to be able to prove anything against you. Not because I'm smart, because I'm clean. Those vending machines of yours, any of them sell Bibles? Ain't a bad idea. Any more questions? A few. Tell us about him, George. Who's this Jughead? That mean you don't know him? Maybe I know his name. I'll help you. Paul Carter. Paul Carter. Paul Carter. Sorry, pal. What else you guys got on your mind? Oh, let's not quit on Paul Carter so fast. I hate to see you wasting your time. I'm just trying to help you. We appreciate that. We sure do, George, because the only way we can operate effectively is with the cooperation of decent, law-abiding citizens. Look, you don't want to believe I'm straight. That's your business. But I'm telling you, I don't know that creep. You could be mistaken. That goes for you guys, too. We make them. And I got a big flash for you. You guys make a lot more mistakes than me. That's why I'm wearing the $300 suit and you got baggy pants. You know how much I paid in taxes last year? More than both of you jokers made. That right. Now quit leaning on me like I'm a two-bit petty larceny bum. I came here on my own cause I'm clean. You ask me about that creep and I tell you, what more can I do? Try telling the truth. Hey, wait a minute. Now I get it. We thought you might. That loving creep, whoever he is, he's the one who called you and put the loving rap on me, right? He have any reason to? How could he have a reason? I don't know the stinking bum. If he says I do, bring him in here and let him say it to my face. Go ahead, bring him in, I'll wait. Just can't stand it when somebody calls you bluff, can you? You seem pretty sure we can't bring in Paul Carter. I don't know what card you're holding, but it looks to me like you're trying to win a pot with a pair of deuces. We heard about how smart you are. I guess that's why they call you Foxy. Go bet your loving bundle on that. As a matter of fact, George, you're right. We can't bring in Paul Carter. He's missing. No, that's too bad. Why? What difference does it make if you don't know him? I'm a soft-hearted slob. I hate to see any guy in trouble. What makes you think Paul Carter's in trouble? He's missing. That means he's either on the lam, or maybe he got rolled and belted on the head and don't know who he is. And that, my good friend, Sergeant, puts me one up on you. Is that right? Go figure it. You're giving me information, but you ain't getting any back. Go on. All that stuff about this Carter bomb being missing. You know, I didn't know nothing about it until you told me. Now, your boss might take a dim view of the way you're questioning me. It'll be in the papers and on TV by tomorrow morning, Fox. We're asking the public to help us locate him. And that's why you wanted to talk to me, huh? To see if I could help you? I'm the public? Something like that. You guys ain't even got a pair of deuces.
8.15 p.m., we continued to question the suspect, George Fox, regarding an attempted extortion and the missing witness to that extortion, Paul Carter. Fox's attitude was one of complacent assurance. We had spent months gathering and sifting the information we had. It wasn't enough to present to the district attorney. We needed more. George Fox's confession. You sure you won't try one of my heaters that haven't put up special for me? No, thanks. Go ahead. They sent me back a buck and a half a copy. A little too rich for me. You may be right. These beauties will spoil anybody. Take another look at that picture of Paul Carter. What for? Maybe your memory's improved. It's your party. Hey, you know something? This ain't a mugshot. Carter doesn't have a record. That's an enlargement of a snapshot I took while I had him under surveillance. Never saw the bum in my life. Try this one. You could show me a hundred of them. I still don't know him. Paul Carter's the one on the left. That's an enlargement of another picture I took the same day, a week ago Sunday. Just before both of you dropped out of sight. What's that supposed to mean? You think I got something to do with this bum being missing? Have you? No, and you know it. I'm getting sore. I ain't been up to now because I figured you two were only doing your job, but now you come up with this garbage. I've been rousted by the best, and they never try to pull anything like that on me. Nobody's pulling anything on you, and don't come up with one of your stories about that being a phony picture, a composite we made using separate pictures of you and Carter. If you'd like to see it, I'll get the original negative out of this folder. You've been around. Here and there. Now, let's get back to topic A, Paul Carter. Sure, that was his name. Paul Carter, you're right. Somehow I thought you'd remember him. He was never a close pal, but I did hook up with him. Tell us about it. Yeah, that was the guy. I'm sure of it now. A year ago, maybe a little more, this chowder had come up to see me. He don't know me, but he's heard about me like everybody has. What do you want, George? Your autograph? Bread, loot, money, what else? Keep going. Carter tells me he's got a chance to buy a nightclub real cheap, a joint on the strip called the Green Lion. He wants me to come up with a scratch and let him run it. I'll say this for the little creep, it was a real good deal, but I ducked it. Because a guy like me with a record can't get a liquor license. Now you tell me, is that fair? They say they want ex-cons to live a useful life, but do they give us a chance? No. They got you down or they want to keep kicking you. Well, it ain't right. No sale. I told you, that's a blow-up of a picture I took of you and Paul Carter outside his house a week ago Sunday. You really think a jury would buy that about not seeing Paul Carter for a year? After I testify when I took that picture? If you did, you'd be lying. I ought to know when I saw that creep, and I do. If it's not a phony picture, then it's an old one. Look, I came in on my own because I got the word you'd square with me. That's a laugh. You're like all the rest. You're trying to get to be a big man by nailing George Fox, even if you have to frame him to do it. Well, get this. George Fox ain't holding still for it. And you can go bet your civil service life on it. We hear that you did put up the money and registered the nightclub in Carter's name. Look, cop, when I lay my bread on the line, what I buy goes in my name. You said something before about being involved in a lot of companies. And they're all strictly legit. Yeah. Some I own and run, and some I just got a piece of for investment reasons. You ever invest in the electronics business? No chance. Those TV repair places don't make enough. Not unless you got a whole chain. No, no. I mean a company manufacturing electronic equipment. Half the creeps running those outfits live in the clouds. Nobody can understand them. I wouldn't trust them with your money. Then how is it you wanted to get in on Tom Tracy's company? Tom Tracy? Look, I was wrong before about not knowing Paul Carter, but this guy I ain't wrong about. I absolutely never saw any creep named Tom Tracy. Now, who is he? He's in electronics. Started with a radio repair shop 15 years ago, and he built it into a $50 million business. 50 million? Brother, he's one guy I wish I did know. Was this Paul Carter tied in with him? He tried to be. One night a couple of weeks ago, Tom Tracy got very drunk up at the Green Lion. So drunk that Paul Carter drove him home. The next day, Carter showed up at Tracy's office. He claimed Tracy had agreed to sell him 2% of the stock in his company for $5,000, and he laid the cash on Tracy's desk. Why tell me all this? Tracy didn't even recall talking to Paul Carter the night before. He told Carter the deal was impossible. Carter argued. When Tracy refused to consider it, Carter played his trump card. He said the money was yours. Mine? What is it with you guys? Get off my back, will you? Stop trying to hang me on a phony rap. I suppose you've got five G's in the folder of yours and you're gonna say it's the same money I gave Carter. Take it easy, Fox. I ain't seen Carter in a year and I never heard of this other bum. We don't believe you. Who cares what you believe? Where would I get five G's in cash? I'm a legitimate businessman. Check my bank account. See if I took out any five G's. I never did and I don't walk around with that kind of money in my pocket. You got nothing on me except a lot of lies and you know how I'm gonna prove their lies? 
by making that crummy rat fink Paul Carter talk. You know where he is? If you can't find him, I will. Wherever he is. I got friends all over the country. You mean the organization? No, I mean friends, good friends. Maybe one of them lent you that $5,000. There was no $5,000. We'll find that dirty loving creep, I guarantee you. And when we do, I'll make him talk. Is that what happened to the witnesses in those other cases? Never mind those other cases. We're talking about Carter. I just want to hear him say I gave him that loot. You do. You heard me. The minute Carter left Tom Tracy's office, Tracy called us in case Carter came back. Which he did the following morning. Tracy, I had to come back. Carter, I told you yesterday that no stock in the company is for sale, and that's fine. I told that to my people, but they won't take the $5,000 back. That's not my problem. Yes, it is. It's your problem and mine. You don't know my people. If you don't go through with the deal, they'll kill both of us. I doubt they'd go that far. Tracy, hear me good. They killed a lot of people already when they didn't play ball their way. I don't want to get killed. I did the best I could. This whole thing was their idea. When I told my people you were so drunk I had to drive you home, they gave me the money and made me come to you with that story. You gotta be kidding. You really gotta be kidding. We don't think so. I do. Tell me what you think you got there. The beginning of an extortion. The beginning? Man, I can't wait to see what you got for a finish. You got nothing there. We think we do. Let me tell you what you got. You got a photograph of some bum calls himself Paul Carter and me standing beside him. You got this bum's word that I ponied up five big ones so he could pick up a nightclub for me. Now you try taking that into court and you'll end up the two biggest dummies in the city. You just heard part one, George. Listen to part two. You know, I told you I want to catch that last bout of the fights. Part two. p.m. We stayed at it. We felt we'd made a point or two. We also felt that George Fox could shed some light on the whereabouts of the missing witness, Paul Carter. We were about to put our prime pieces of evidence in front of Fox. He still appeared sure of himself. We had to somehow shake that self-assurance. He was an old hand at interrogation, and he was good at it. We had to be better. It was two days later, Fox. Same office, same man, Paul Carter and Tracy. I sure hope they got more to say. I'm getting sleepy. The last time, Carter, the answer is no. The subject's closed as far as I'm concerned. Well, it's not closed as far as my people are concerned. It's too bad. For both of us. I told you, you and me are marked right now. What do you mean, marked? They're gonna kill us both if you don't make good on the deal. I keep telling you, there never was any deal. All right, do this for me. Do what? Talk to my people. I'm not talking to anyone, Carter. That's fine. Just talk to them on the phone. Get me off the hook. You can do that much, can't you? Why don't you leave town? Where would I go? San Francisco, New York, any place. You've got that 5,000 they gave you. That'd be real smart, wouldn't it? They'd run me down and quick. You know better than to say that. You don't run away from the syndicate. They'd flatten me any place I tried to go. Now, I'm gonna call them. You gotta get my neck off the block. You gotta do that. They won't listen to me anymore. Maybe they'll believe you. I'm fascinated. You might be. Yeah? Tracy won't believe me. Talk to him. Hello, who's this? Never mind who's this. You listen, Buckethead, and listen hard. I'm done with the small talk, you hear me? Next time you open your mouth to me, it'll be with a barrel of a 45 in it. I'll blow your rotten, stinking head off. I'll put enough lead in your gut, you'll think you're a toy soldier, you hear me? Now you draw up the papers for that 2%, and you turn them over to Carter there, and you do it right now. What's all that supposed to be about? You tell us you're the big man that was doing all the talking and the threatening. Me? Now you're trying to hang that jazz on me? You know this is insulting. I came in here on my own and you guys positively insult me. That wasn't you making all that loud talk. Sounds a little like me, I'll admit. But that guy, whoever he is, it ain't me. We know it isn't, so do you. Where's your proof, genius? I didn't hear no names mentioned, did you? Only them same two bums, Tracy and that creep, what's his name, Carter. Is this the end of your show? I gotta get going, I'm late now. Stay for the last act, Fox, listen to part three. This is four days later, same office, same telephone, just one man now, Tom Tracy. Hello. Tom Tracy. Who's this? Somebody who's interested in your future. What do you mean? You heard me. This is the last call to dinner, Tracy. The fun and games are over. I know you got a wife and family, and I know you don't want to see him alone in the world, so get to it. Get that 2% deal drawn up, and let's call it things to do today, understand? Who am I talking to? Your lifesaver, punk. If you 
do what you're told. I never made any deal for 2%, and I don't like being threatened. You're wrong twice, Big Money. You made a deal, and you know it. And you're not being threatened. You're being promised. I want those papers, and I want them today, or you don't live to see the 6 o'clock news on television. You have anything to do with Paul Carter? He's been bypassed, and so is Fox. You're dealing with me now, punk. You've got till 6 o'clock tonight, and then it's going to be hats and horns. You're on, George. Who is that guy? Am I supposed to know him, too? You know him. Got a picture of him you want me to look at? You know the meaning of the word extortion, Fox? It comes from a couple of Latin words. It means to twist out, taking something from somebody by twisting or squeezing him, using force or the threat of force. All right, you went to school. Penalties, five to 15 years. What's all this got to do with me? That was you on this second piece of tape we played. We think the man who just burned you on that last piece was one of your boss men, Jack Rock. Jack Rock burned me? You're way off base. I heard the name Fox mentioned, but that don't prove up. That don't prove up for eight cents. Check your city guide. There's a million foxes. As far as that cruddy tape you got, anybody can make like somebody else's voice. You got 10 pounds of air, and that's all you got if you got that. Go on. I ain't a lawyer, but I know you guys can't go bugging offices and phones. That's not admissible in court. You're right, George. You ain't no lawyer. Tom Tracy gave us written permission to put a concealed microphone and recorder in his office and to tap his phone for the purpose of gathering evidence of the commission of a crime. That makes it as legal as eating a hot dog at the ball game. You know what this is? That comes from a machine called a voice printer. It picks up sound vibrations from the voice and records them on paper. So? That particular print was made from your voice on the tape that was recorded with your permission when you were in here for questioning last year. So? So this. No two people have exactly the identical voice qualities. Each person's voice print is as unique as his fingerprints. Take a look at this one, Fox. That one was made from the tape we've been listening to. You don't have to be an expert to see they compare. Talk to us. The story you have just seen is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On August 12th, trial was held in Department 189, Superior Court of the State of California for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. Under further interrogation, the suspect George Fox admitted having shot and killed Paul Carter. He led officers to a location on the Mojave Desert where he had buried Paul Carter's body. Intensive investigation failed to prove the other voice on the tape recording was that of Jack Rock. Fox steadfastly refused to implicate Jack Rock or anyone else who might have been involved in the attempted extortion of Tom Tracy. George Fox was tried and convicted on a charge of murder in the first degree. Murder in the first degree is punishable by death in the gas chamber or confinement in the state prison for life.